Today, I would like to take you on a little journey, a problem-solving journey that involves synthetic division. Let's take a look at the following example. So we have negative 4x cubed minus x squared minus 12, all being divided now by x plus 4. So the first step is take a look at your numerator, which is known as the dividend. Take a look at the highest power of x and then add 1 to that power for a total of 4 in this problem. Well, 3 plus 1 is always going to be 4 whether it's in this problem or not. But what that's going to tell you is that it's going to tell you the number of columns here necessary inside of that synthetic division table. All right. Then what you're going to do is remember that this will represent your x cubed term because that's the highest power. Then it goes x squared, then it goes x, and then your constant. So just simply plug in now the coefficients accordingly. So the coefficient of your x cubed term is going to be a negative 4. Coefficient of your x squared term, remember there's a 1 there, right? So it's really a negative 1. The coefficient of your x term, uh oh, wait, where's my x? Don't worry about it. Just plug in a 0. And then your constant term is going to be a negative 12. Bada bing, bada boom, easy as pie. Mmm, pie. It's getting close to Thanksgiving. And boy, does pie sound delicious right about now, huh? Who likes pumpkin pie? Not me. How about pecan pie? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Yes, I am 97 years old. Thank you. Uh, anyway, uh, you're going to now look at your di uh, divisor. I was going to say <laughs> between denominator, divisor, and dividend. I'm like, which D word is it? You're going to look at your divisor, which is in the denominator below the dividend. Okay. And what you're going to do is you're going to set that equal to zero. You're going to solve that for X. And the reason why you're going to do that is because now you'll know the number to plug in here on the outside of your synthetic division table. Now, follow these steps. Simply take the first coefficient, drop it straight on down. This is a red box because nothing's going to go in it. Then take that value of negative 4, multiply it by the value on the outside for a total of positive 16. Put it in the next adjacent cell, add that column together for a total now of 15. Then take the 15, multiply it by that outside value of negative 4. This is going to be a negative value overall. And 15 times 4 is going to be 60. Then all you got to do is simply add this column together. That's going to be a total of now negative 60. And now, take the negative 60, multiply by by the negative 4. That's going to be a positive, right? And 60 times 4 is going to be 240. And then add the results of that column together. So that's going to be now a total of 228. Cool. Now, keep in mind what these terms represent. This will represent your remainder. This will represent your constant, your x, and then your x squared. And dot, 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 the pattern continues. Okay, this will always represent your remainder. And then it just gets, you know, constant x, x squared, etc. So now what you want to do before you finish uh, writing your quotient now, please look back at your divisor. Locate the x and locate the coefficient value of it. In this problem, it's a 1. We really don't have to do it in this problem, but I want to teach it to you anyway. What you got to do is you have to take this coefficient value and divide it into each of these terms of your quotient, but not the remainder. Don't do it to the remainder. No. Now, obviously dividing everything by 1 isn't going to do anything, so you don't have to worry about that for this problem. But in case it changes now on you, you're not up the creek without the paddle. You have the paddle, so use it. Great. So anyway, dividing everything by 1 doesn't do anything, so now we're just going to go back to this, and we're simply now going to write down our quotient. So we got negative 4x squared, negative 4x squared, plus 15x, great. Minus 60, not minus 60C, that's constant, so there's no X. And then plus now your remainder, plus because it's positive. There's no sign there. And we're going to write now the remainder, 228 over whatever your divisor is, X plus 4. And then I'm just going to take a look at this, and can I simplify kind of anything? Nah, not really, right? So that's going to be the end of it. That's it. Finito. That's your quotient. So when you take your, uh, what's that called? Divise, no, denominator, no, ah, dividend. When you take your dividend and you divide it by your divisor, you get your quotient. God, I want to give that person, whoever came up with these terms, a big giant hug, right? Remember, love trumps it all, not hate. Cool. Thanks for tuning in. I really do appreciate it. If you can like, subscribe, that helps us out tremendously, and maybe even telling some of your classmates. We'd love to help more people, and that'd be a great way to help us grow. Our future is literally in your hands. We thank you from the bottom of our hearts. Take care.